Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if a syringe works in a vacuum chamber. So this is kind of a redo experiment because I tried to do this earlier and it wasn't a very good setup. I had the syringe outside of the vacuum chamber and tried to pull a vacuum inside of it while it was outside. Kind of a mess of an experiment because I didn't couldn't think of a way to get the syringe to work inside the vacuum chamber very easily. So I tried to do it outside the vacuum chamber, didn't work good at all. So this is my redo experiment with a much better mechanism to see if a syringe works in a vacuum chamber. So I had to actually figure out a way to get the syringe to pull under vacuum. So how I'm going to do that is first I have a spring. I'm going to put the spring on the syringe. So the spring will help it once it's engaged like this and you let go of it, it will suck it up all by itself. So I have to have it tied down with something like this and then be able to release it under vacuum. So I'm going to be attaching this black plastic to it, draping it over the end of the syringe tightly. Okay, so this holds the syringe in place. I'll have a tube connected to the other end of the syringe. And it's going to be in water like this. Okay, and then all I have to do is cut this black tape somehow. So I'm going to use my high powered laser and shine it in there under the vacuum to cut it. And this is what should happen. Let's see if it works outside the vacuum chamber first. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, it worked. See how it just sucked up the water? I should have about five milliliters of water now. Okay, the mechanism works. Now let's just put this whole system in the vacuum chamber but the only difference will be, we'll be at full vacuum, and so we're going to see if the syringe can actually suck up water. So if we're at a full vacuum, there won't be a pressure differential, so it shouldn't be able to suck up any water, I think. Let's try it out and see what happens. Okay, I got my mechanism set up here. So it's my syringe with a spring attached to it, and I'm going to sever this black piece here with my laser while it's under vacuum and see if we can actually suck up any water that's in the vacuum chamber. Okay, let's get it under vacuum. Three, two, one. So you can see bubbles coming out of the end of the tube there. That's because the air that's in the tube, in between the plunger and the end of the tube is expanding and so it's bubbling out of the end there under the vacuum. Okay, we're at a pretty good vacuum in there already. The water's barely starting to boil in there. Looks like all the dissolved oxygen air is coming out of it right now starting to boil. Okay, we're at full vacuum here. Let's zoom in. Okay, the water's actively boiling. We're at a full vacuum. Let's cut the syringe and try to suck up the water and see what happens. Three, two, one. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing went into it. Whoa, I kind of expected some to go into it, but nothing. It couldn't suck up anything. That's crazy. No water whatsoever went in. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> So because it's under vacuum, there's no pressure differential that it could make, so it couldn't suck up any water. <laughs> that is so cool. So now there's a complete vacuum in there. So the pressure differential can only arise once I put pressure back into the chamber. So now when I put pressure back in, water is going to rush into the syringe. Okay, let's turn off the vacuum pump. Okay, now I'm going to put pressure in. Now I'm going to put air into the chamber and this is still going to be a vacuum in there. So it's going to push water up through the tube. 
Three, two, one. <laughs> That's so cool. Now it completely filled the syringe. So basically that's what happens when you pull a syringe normally is you create a vacuum in there and there's pressure in the atmosphere outside that pushes water up into the syringe. But what I did is I basically delayed that by creating the vacuum but there was no pressure outside to push it into the syringe until I lit air into the chamber. That is cool to see separated like that. So the main reason that didn't work like I mentioned is because I couldn't get a pressure differential between the inside of the syringe and the outside of the syringe. But it turns out even if I wasn't at a full vacuum, it still wouldn't have worked very well. If I was still at around the vapor pressure of water, which is still a pretty low pressure, I still wouldn't be able to suck in the water because basically as I tried to suck it in, the water would just start to boil and you'd only get water vapor and not liquid water. But because the spring moves so fast, it would be able to suck some water in a little bit, but it would mostly boil the water. And that's called cavitation. That's what happens regularly when you try to suck up water really fast through a syringe, is it basically boils it at room temperature because you lowered the pressure inside of the syringe. For example, look what happens when I try to pull up the water really fast through this tiny opening here. You can see that I actually end up with an air bubble there, only it's not actually air, that's actually water vapor in there. Because I was lowering the pressure so much in there that it caused more water to evaporate. And so it became water vapor. So basically, basically you get a water vapor bubble in there. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. Remember to leave me any comments or questions that you have in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. And if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and you can also hit the bell so you can be notified when I put out my latest video. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.